is the fact that I formulated this Deutsche Yotza algorithm, yes, how to understand is the function constant or balanced. Yes, but I didn't tell, uh, so I tell the answer how algorithm looks like, yes, but I didn't explain why it is working. So now I'm going with the very details, consider why it is working. And uh, the main uh, feature is that just to, to let you, how to say, to see how make calculations of quantum schemes, yes? Unfortunately, this would be the last time when I give it with so details, because in another case, you know, each algorithm is more than one lecture, yes? And so uh, later I will just show things like this, show that you can calculate and this would be the result, yes? Or oh, very vague, uh, how the calculations, why it is like this, yes? So. Uh, up to now, so, uh, so F is either constant or balanced, yes, we know this. So F is a function from n digits 0, 1 to 0, 1. And we know that either it is constant, so on all sequences it has the same value, or it is balanced, so for half of them it gives us zero, and for half of them it gives us one. Yes, and there's a quantum implementation. Yes, we think that we have a gate, we have an operator, yes, which works like this on the basis vectors. So if you take x uh, as the first n bits, yes, and here I use just binary notation, yes, so this is. And uh, y is a single Attila qubit, yes, so one, yes, I can write. Then it maps the first part stays as it was, and the second, if f of x is zero, it stays uh, as it is. If it is non-zero, so one, yes, so it uh, inverses. Yes, so I assume that I already have this gate, and this is a black box. Yes, it comes from me from nowhere, yes? And then I told that if we consider such a scheme, yes, as written here, so first I do Adamar gates to all first uh, n bits. On the Atsilo qubit I do Adamar, but I start with one, not with zero. Yes, after this I do this big gate, and after this do Adamar once again and do measurement. Yes, and I claimed that if I got zero, then it is, I forgot, it is, it is what? Uh, then it is constant, and if I get not zero, yes, then this is balanced. Balanced. Yeah. Yeah, so I claimed this. Uh, we didn't, haven't seen why it is like this. That, did anybody try to do calculations? No. Okay, so then, <laughs> then it's correct that I will do them, <laughs> yes, so. And by the way, this is the first time when we do calculation of a big scheme, yes, not of one or two qubits, yes. So uh, kind of this is a good tutorial, yes, for this. And uh, So uh, I, uh, everything I, all, oh, I put it only on Telegram group. I should also send by email. Yes, this was my mistake. Yes, true. Yes, I already did this, but only to Telegram group, not to email. Yes, I, I forgot, of course, next, uh, af right after the lecture, I will send it. Yes, yes, sorry, yeah. So did you register for the course? But then I sent an email where it was a link to, to all people who was in there. If you didn't receive it, so please write your email in the end of the lecture, I will, I will do this. Yes, so it might be. <laughs> because technical issues always appears, yes. So. And uh, okay, yeah, so 
Let me first do calculation, yes, for n equal to 1. Yes, so that's a wonderful story, yes. And even this we would be able later to implement on a real computer, yes. Wonderful, yes. So, okay, what would be the, uh, how we can make a calculation? So we start with a state like this, and I write it like this. Yes, so please kind of be, shall I say, get used to this type of notation, yes? Who use that? I mean, it's a great notation. What? It's in your notation, uh, where does it come from? So it's kind of, it's uh, here it is the first qubit in a notation which I used uh, always. Second qubit is the, in the notation which I used always. Yeah. And this is the direct product. Yes, and direct product, I just, you know, do a show with nothing, yes, basically. No, 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 it's standard notation. Okay, I don't know the name by whom it is, yes, but it's, I follow it from, so there are two books which I recommend, both of them follow, follows this, <laughs> follows this notation, yes, so this is, I, I don't know the name, yes. Okay, but in quantum computing, it, be, it is a standard story, yes? So this is, so, okay, let me assume that I, uh, now I want to consider only this part, yes? So basically, yes, I can write it as a tensor product of 2H, but uh, if you enjoy the math, yes? If you don't enjoy the math, yeah, then you can just think that you apply H to <laughs> each of them, yes? Okay, zero will go to one over square root of two, zero plus one, yes? And the second will go to one over square root of two, zero minus one, yes? And uh, okay, yes, so here for me it would be convenient to look on this in the following way, yes? So, but we works with vectors, so we can do whatever we want, yes? Uh, the notation which is more convenient, you know, this is my choice, yes, basically. So I will write it in the following sense, yes? Uh, plus one. Yes. Yes, so I have a term one half, yes, which I will later, you know, quite often forget, yes. And by the way, if I forget it and got not unitary vector, you just should always think that I should put everything unitary. Yes, and uh, it's convenient for me to keep the second qubit in the state uh, as it is, yes, so zero minus one, but the first one to decompose into sum of twos different, yes? And let me show why I do it like this. Let me consider to where, so now I would like to see to where I will go uh, I do after this. Yes, and let me see what would be the outcome of this vector, yes? And by the way, this is the time, you know, I already, I should put here one over square root of two actually, yes, but I forgot to do this, yes, so please be calm. I think it would be not the only time in the course when I did this, when I forgot, yes, because if I don't put here one over square root of two, it's not a unitary vector, yes, so it's a problem. But please, I'm also a human being, so I also make mistakes, yes. So let us see to where it will go, yes. Okay, the first term will go to x, and uh, okay, so I, there is a reason why I forgot one square root of two, yes. x, and here will be zero plus f of x, yes, and here will be minus x one plus f of x, yes. What is QF? 
This is this uh, gate which implements the following change of the basis, the following permutation in the basis. Yes, so this is our quantum oracle. So this is how we encode function f in quantum computing. He, uh, yes, okay, very, so this is what for I am delivering in very details here, yes? So let us see. So what is x here? Kind of normally, if I write here n, yes, it would be a number from 0 to 2 to the power n minus 1. But here I am working with 1 qubit, yes? So x is either 0 or 1. Yes, and actually either 0, yes, or 1. So I will apply later what I wrote here to this particular story, yes? So my question would be, like, 1, there are all writings that are formulated in terms of the number of the writings are it's the logical... It's a logical plus, yes, so it's a logical plus. plus. One, plus 1 plus 1 goes to 0, yes. Yes, and this is just a notation, yes, so that's 1 plus 1 goes to 0. So I can say mod 2, yes. Yeah, but. Uh, so, uh, yes, now let us consider two cases. Case 1, f of x is equal to 0. Yes, then it will be x 0 minus 1. 1, and once again, 1 over square root of 2. Yes, and sometimes it's important, sometimes it's not important. Yes, I can do, because Q is linear operation, yes, it can act not only on unitary vectors. Yes, I'm not forbidden to write this, yes? But, uh, okay, might be you. So this is like this. And case 2, f of x equal to 1. Yes, then I will get 1 over square root of 2, x, and now it will be 1 minus 0. Yes? And now there is a more. Wait, wait, wait. You write this in table, you have this one, and then you write the table. Why do you write the table? Why do you write the So if f of x is equal to 1, yes, then I just rewrite what is this state. Yes, substituting f of x is equal to 1. So I do notation like this, yeah. or I can do multiplication of matrices. Yeah, but the other one, the so here I said, so I can write here star and say that this is equal to star, yes? But my experience, Yes, show that in software development, and we are a bit close to software development here, if you go in a very, very details of, uh, of perfect notation, then you lose understanding. Yes, I, I mean, this is a bit contradicting to what is what we do in mathematics, yes, basically. But this is in the middle between mathematics, yes, because you still need tensor products, linear algebra, we will later see Fourier transforms and uh, who, whoever knows what, yes? Uh, but at the same time, we are still we are a bit in software development because what is written here is just a program, yes? And okay, so I consider those two cases, yes? And now I would like to, uh, to uh, pay attention to several things, yes? First of all, those two states by itself, they're undistinguishable, yes? The they difference is on multiplier minus one, yes? But you should not make this mistake. Still, there is a huge difference because, okay, between this state and this state, yes? So they are, the difference between them is multiplication by minus one. 
So they're equivalent, yes? But uh, uh, what is important, and I would like to stress attention on this, you should not consider them as equivalent at this moment. Because I never, so because I'm writing part of my calculation, yes? And later I will add to the formula some other terms, yes? And when I add some other terms, you know, they, they become not, uh, uh, so they become not equivalent. So if you have A1 plus A2, yes, uh, Psi1, uh, Psi1 plus Psi2, yes, and Phi1 plus Phi2, yes, if those guys are equivalent, and those guys are equivalent, it doesn't mean that the sum is equivalent, yes? Yes, on it. Yes. Correct. Yes, so exactly this. So, so because of this, I am telling that during calculations, I will never use equivalence relation. I forbid myself. Yes, because I easily get error. So I forbid myself to do this, and I recommend you not to do this, yes? Because then, kind of, you, you easily make mistakes, and yes? The, then the, what are the books, for instance, do that? What? The books that, you, that you are using, do that also? Yes, so, so they also never do equivalence uh, unless the final step, yes, basically. Yes, and... Uh, Okay, uh, and uh, there will be one more tricky moment, but later in the lecture, yes, with this equivalence. So, I look on, on those two, yes, and I would like to stress attention, and this is a, just a convenient uh, way of writing, that in any case, in any case, it's equivalent to the following expression, yes? So this star, in any case, is equal to x, 0 minus 1, and I put multiplier here, minus 1 to the power f of x. Oops. Yes? Because if f of x is equal to 0, then it is true. If f of x is equal to 1, then it is true. It's just, you know, a convenient form of writing this. Yes, and OK, let me now apply this, thinking to, to this sum. Yes. OK, I erase the formula, but so, OK. Now let me follow this, yes, and I put it here, yes. So by QF, the way it's going, it's going to 1 over 2, and here it goes to 0. QF is an operator. So I show from this vector. So I, I, the notation which I am given that I have states, yes, so let me, so I have state psi1 and goes with operator u1, it goes to state psi2, which goes to state psi 3, and, and so on. Yes, so this is the notation which I'm following. Yes, and I found it's quite convenient, and basically, yes, most of the books are following it, yes. And, okay, so to where it goes, yes, so we are looking on the first term, and we can apply the right blackboard to it, and we will get 
minus 1 to the power f of 0, 0 times 0 minus 1. Yes, and with the second term, we get minus 1 to the power f of, uh, f of 1, 1, 0, minus 1. Yes. It might be I need to put more, one more bracket. Yes. And OK, what we see here, we see that we have everywhere this term. Yes, so we can write it in the following sense. Yeah, so we can write it minus 1 to the power f of 0, 0 plus minus 1 to the power f of 1, 1. Uh, so brackets is enough. 0 minus 1. So I applied QF to this vector. Yes, we check. So I started from 0, 1. I applied 2 times Adamar operator. Yes, I did some calculations. And after this, I apply one more time. Yes, so I'm, I'm reaching the goal. Yes, to get used to everybody with the notation which I'm using, which is for me, it's very Natural, yes, but okay, that's not always from the first attempt, yes. So, okay, and now there are two things, yes. So it's either balanced or, so balanced means uh, f of 0 and f of 1 are different, yes. And uh, constant means that they are equal, basically. <laughs> it's easy thing. So in case if it is constant, then this vector is nothing but C, which is either plus or minus 1, yes, times 0 plus 1, yes. And if F is balanced, And then it's once again constant, which either 0 or plus minus 1 times 0 minus 1. Yes. And OK, now we are going to apply a Damar operator to one of, of them. And if we are in this case, we will get 0. And if we are in that case, Oh, okay, plus minus one, yes. So next, next part of my scheme is that applying. Yeah, I'm dealing with this scheme. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's called not formula. It's called scheme. Yes. And uh, okay, and if we apply it here, yes, we will get uh, plus minus one. Uh, so now it's, and OK, after measurement, we, in that case, we get 0 with 100%. In that case, we have 1 with 100%. So we can deduce is F constant or balanced. Yes, technically, even here we get uh, profit comparing to classical algorithm. Yes, because, yeah? Uh, there was a question. Yeah, so he, no, okay, if we have a perfect computer, say perfect as a current classical computers, then we will really get it with, get with probability zero or probability one. Uh, so zero or one with 100% probability. But of course, yes, current uh, computers are far from perfect, yes, and uh, later today I will do the demonstration how you can run and, okay. I wanted to play with some schemes, and this could be a scheme with which we play. <laughs> yes, basically. Your goal is not to make it perfect, to make it good enough. 
Yes, yes. No, but here I can kind of I demonstrate uh, how to say potential of algorithm. So of course the prog problem by itself is quite artificial. Yes, so when, yeah, so that's uh, an algorithm because of this is quite artificial. Yes, so this is exactly so. Algorithm by itself is perfect. Yeah, yeah, so the problem is only in the machine. Yeah, we will later see algorithms which are not perfect, yes, but here this is a perfect algorithm. Yeah. Okay, uh, so we did this for n equal to 1. Let us do it for arbitrary n, yes? And for arbitrary n, yes, what we do, yes, we start with this state and apply now Adamar operator to all of the qubits. Yes, oh, okay, I erase the formula, but I erase the scheme, yes, but let me draw it somewhere, yes. It will be not big. Yes. Yes, and here was zero, 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 and here was one. Yes, so this was the scheme. And now we apply Adamar operator to everything. Yes, okay, what we will get. And now please pay attention, it will be important uh, the coefficient which I have in front of formula. It, it is very rare situation. But here it will be important just to carefully track it. Yes, so it will be 1 n to the power 2. Yes, I, I will write an answer and after this let, let us, how to say, de discuss it, yes. Yes, so. Here to zero, so I apply Adamar and get half sum of uh, zero and one with a proper coefficient. And uh, here I apply one and get zero minus one, yes? And now, okay, it is very convenient, but if I open here the brackets, yes, I will get uh, with coefficient one all the sequences of zero and one possible, yes? So it will be equal to 1 to the power n by half sum of k from k from 0 to 2 to the power n minus 1. Yes. Yes, it is. Let me do it like this. Yes, and OK, what I can do now, I can do and uh, to pay attention to the fact when I was writing this formula, I was never actually using that the axis consists of a single qubit, yes? It can consist of any number of qubits, yes? And so if I now apply QF, yes, then I will get the following, yes? Now I will get the sum, and this is minus 1 to the power f of k, yes, k, n, and uh, okay, it is multiplied, now I, I would specially put brackets, yes, and uh, to 1 over square root 0 minus 1, yes, and okay, uh, Technically, what I did, I applied it to any 
of this term multiplied by this separately. Yes, so it should be under the summation. Yes, but now I pay attention. Ha, I have everywhere 0 and 1, 0 minus 1. So I can put it outside of the sum. Yes, so first I do like this, and after this I can hoop and hoop. <laughs> yes, which is very good, yes, because it happens that And the put another, uh, I'm not good in erasing. <laughs> yes. So I removed one open bracket, just put it in another case because everywhere I had a direct product on the same term. Yes, and it is very convenient because what we need to do, what we are going to do. No, one over square root of. So I think the parent structure is, yeah. is uh, perfect, yes? Yeah. And OK, what is good? Because OK, now uh, for me it is more convenient because, I, OK, I need to apply those Adamar operators, yes? So I basically can forget about the last qubit, yes? Because it's a direct product of the first qubits, yes? And so if I write it. Like, if I'm a freak mathematician, I need to write it like this. Yes. So now I want to apply Adamar operators actually to this part. Yes. Of the, of the problem. And let me see how it works. Yes. Uh, how it works. Yes. So. Mm, for this, I would like to see how it works with what? So how it acts and how Adamar operators acts on this? Yes? So let us see. OK, technically, I write with the last qubit, so I will write with the last qubit. Yes. So at the end, yes, I will write this. And OK, now once again, I would like to apply uh, those Adamar operators separately to each k. Yes. So let me, as a side thing, look how Adamar operator this and things works on K. Yes? Technically K now I need to remember that this is certain sequence of zero and one. Yes. And I apply H to it. So there is a way to write what it is would be exactly, but I would like to write it in the following manner. Zero plus minus one, yes, times zero plus minus one, and so on. And of course, in, I need to multiply by a certain term, and this term is one over two to the power and half. And uh, uh, so I put plus or minus depending, uh, was it zero or one, basically. Yeah? So that's, that's it. Yeah? And here I re once again use the fact that I fix what is a Damar operator. And uh, I, uh, what I would like to stress attention that in front of zero, it is always plus one. Yes, here. And here I use the fact that I fix, and that I just apply linear operator and never apply equivalence relation, yes? So it would be much easier you if you forget about it. Yes, so let us forget. About what? About equivalence relation. 
yes, uh, so uh, how we continue, yes? What I would like to stress that after this, I get something of the following form. This is one over two to the power and half. After this, I have zeros plus sum of CKK. Yes, now K goes from one to, uh, let us use another letter G. From one, not from zero. Yes, and all of the CJ is either plus one or minus one. This is everything what is important for me to know. Yes? And so let me do, and okay, I put also somewhere index K, yes, because uh, it depends on K from which I started. Yes, and uh, okay, then let us see what would be continuation of this particular uh, expression. Yes, so I apply to it, to it all Adamar operators. And uh, what I have, I have one over two to the power and half sum from k from zero to two to the power n minus one, minus one to the power f of k times, and now I need two times to, to this expression. And uh, this expression is one over two to the power or and half, and zeros, all zeros, plus C, G, K, G. And I don't pay attention to them at all, in fact. Yes, and I need now to, to understand with the bracket structure. Bracket structure is fine. Let me continue with the uh, equality, yes, so one, and half one uh, to so okay, the coefficient will be one to the power two to the power n, and now let us see what is the coefficient in front of all zeros. And this would be easy coefficient, yes, because this is just sum of minus one to the power f of k, f of k all zeros. Yes, and uh, uh, okay, this will be some other sum, and, uh, constants I don't mind, so it will be like this. And okay, because I technically need to write everything correctly, yes, so that's, I need to add one more thing in the end. And let me see now, there are two possibilities. If it is constant, then it is, uh, so there are two possibilities. Constant, F constant. Then this sum is either plus, ma, plus one or minus one. Yes, yeah, so then it is plus or minus one. Yes, if it is, mm, uh, no, not uh, to, to, to the power, uh, sorry, yes, plus minus two to the power n. So look, yes, well, like, like let us, so this is a tricky moment. So this is the moment when you really have to, I don't know, pay attention to what is going on. Yes, so I, uh, took each particular k here, yes, and applied the thing in the yeah. bottom part of the blackboard, yes. So I write it here, yes, so for k from zero to two to the power n minus one, which corresponds exactly to the k in this formula. Yes, so that's exactly it, yes. So I have, okay, I have coefficient minus one to the power f of k, so I keep it. Yes, and after this I look, okay, what was in the end here? 
And in the end, here was that I have co zeros plus this plus uh, j with some coefficient, which I ignore, basically. For me, it's now it's not important. Yes, so what? How do you decide that? So well, like, they exist? Exist. So the, the four, so I wrote this. This is a definition of those cj, yes? So I, it's important that 0 has coefficient 1, and there are some coefficients here. And I also should remember that the vector is of unit length. This would be important. Yes, this why, where I will use it. Yes, and why I was carefully track the, this coefficient, not be not careful as usual. Yes. Yes, I basically independently consider this term and put some here and consider that term. And OK, technically, it's sum of, you know, that's technically I should write here a kind of sum by k by j. And, but then I will write questions what is here, yes, because, you know, there is minus 1 to the power times c. But what I'd like to say that, OK, in any case, it is something of, in, in form of j, which is important that it doesn't involve zeros. There, there is no zeros there. Yes? And OK, so if f is constant, then this sum is plus minus 2 to the power n. And if f is balanced, mm, then it is 0. Yes? It could be both, yes? It could. No, it can be either 2 to the power n or minus 2 to the power n. But let me now see carefully. OK, so if it is balanced, then this coefficient is 0. And then probability that after measurement we get all zeros is 0. Yes, so if we don't, if we get, if we're in a balanced situation, we necessarily get here not zero. Yes? Now, assume that f is constant, and this coefficient is plus minus 2 to the power n. So when we multi take into account the multiplier, so this will be plus minus 1. This means that the rest has to be zero, yes, because the, the norm of the vector is 1. Yes, so if it is constant, then we necessarily get all zeros. Yes, so then this is exactly the way how it works. Yes? Why do you need to, to refer the, the definition of the problem? But uh, there is no uh, scenario where we get f to be 1 for just one case and the rest means 0. Yes, so the, we, should, uh, we should a priori know that either f is balanced or constant. So we have to know this a priori. In order, this algorithm works. Yes, in another case, you know, this algorithm doesn't work. Yes, <laughs> there are some algorithms which works for integer numbers, but doesn't work for real numbers. Yes, <laughs> there is something which works for positive and doesn't work for negative. Yes, then you have to somehow do, do this, yes? So this is a, a priori, yes? OK, this is, that's it with the algorithm. Let me check if I do or did not forget anything important in my notes. Yes, so I, yes, uh, yes, yes. Yes, I did not forget anything important for this algorithm, so questions are very welcome. <laughs> yes, so questions are very welcome always, yes, but this is actually even better time. Uh, it's time for a break, yes, but let's have break a bit later, yes, if, if it is okay, if you don't really insist, because there is a little part which I want to do with Blackboard, and after this I would like to switch to presentation, so let me 
keep it <laughs> as it is, uh, switch and move to exactly uh, break part. So this was the algorithm. Yes, and this was, uh, had two goals. First, that shows that there exists at least one algorithm where it is good. And another thing to show how to do manipulations with big schemes, with big programs. Yes, it's such thing called scheme, yes. And, and uh, <coughs> there is one thing, yes, so up to now, I spoke a bit about one qubit gates. Yes, we saw so Adam are not. Yes, but there is a problem with one qubit gates. If you start with a direct product, you always stay as a direct product. And while you are in a direct product state, there is no way to get benefit from quantum computer. Yes, so we have to do something, yes, and uh, uh, it happens that it is enough to consider two qubit gates. Yes, paragraph seven. And moreover, it's enough to consider special type of them, control gates. Yes, and the most important is controlled not. I just will introduce them. Yes, controlled not. So assume that we have two two uh, two qubit state. Yes, and let me show how it works on basis. Yes, it. Is called C not. Yes. Yes, how it works. So in the first coordinate, it always stays as it was. Yes, so the first coordinate is x. Yes, and with the second coordinate, yes, it be, it's not, not coordinate, qubit. Yes, it works as following. So if x is equal to zero, then it is y, yes? If x is equal to one, oh, so it's better like this, yes? Then it is not y, yes, so y plus one. Technically, I can say that this goes to x, y plus x, yes? But if I use this terminology, I would confuse you. It's proper to consider this as a control knot. So controlled means that the first, okay, first coordinate stays as it was. It's, it's never changing. And the second coordinate happens the following. If the first coordinate is zero, then nothing happens. If the second coordinate, uh, if the first coordinate is one, then to second coordinate we apply knot. Yes, so this is quite, this is why it is called control knot, and this is the way how it is I don't know, convenient to look on it. Yes, and let me write technically how it works on a basis. What? Uh, so, okay, I, I wrote this formula. I don't know the, how you, you call it. Yes, it depends on which, in which kindergarten you are studying mathematics, yes? And all the different kindergartens have different notations. Yes, and now, yes, I wrote it here. Yes, and recall to that to each operator, we have matrix associated to it, and let me write down this matrix. Mm -hmm. So it's matrix four by four. Yes, and here it is one, one. Here it is zero, one, one, zero, and here is zeros. Yes, and if you check that it is really this matrix, yes. One more thing, how it is denoted on, on the string notation. Control, because first bit is a controller. So it, it controls, does the second operation happens. So there is no, it's not a definition, that's a name. I could call it, I don't know, Charles Gate, yes? And this would be okay completely. 
So it's the way how people consider. So the later, uh, the next, uh, I will uh, uh, define control U operator, yes? And any case, the first qubit is X. Uh, the first qubit is a controller. And the second is a controlled qubit, yes? And this means that the first qubit tells you information about what we are going to do with the second qubit. And there are two possibilities. Either we do nothing, or we apply not operator to it. Yeah, this is, a con this is, this, this is the sense which people use for, for, for word control here. Yeah, so the, so the, the next thing, so OK, yeah, let, let, me, let us finish with this before I go to, to, to next, yes? So, and uh, okay, what's, uh, uh, I would like also to take the notation. Yes, and notation could be either following. Yes, I can write here, not, not, and I put dot here. Mm, and I write it like this. Yes, so which means that this, this is the x, yes, the first qubit, and this is the second qubit. Yes, or because controlled not is very frequent operator, then people have a special notation for it, which made it easier to draw. Yes, but there is, don't try to find a, a reason. Yes, it just, uh, okay, might be this is refers to plus, which is here. Yes, of course, I should put plus here, yes. Or, or just the, the way that uh, in order to complete it, I don't need you know, to erase something. Can you, can you explain what, why this picture represents what you want to do? No, I don't know. This is, the not, this is exactly what I told that, you know, This is a notation, yes? And uh, you know, there is no particular, I don't know any particular reason for this. I can invent 10, yes, but I actually don't know a particular reason for exactly this notation. The second thing, yes, which I would like to say is controlled U operator, where U is one dimensional, uh, one qubit gate. Yes, so this is U is one qubit gate. Yeah, so that's works as following, so x, y, it goes, first coordinate stays x as before, and the second coordinate, if x was zero, then do nothing, yes, and if x is equal to one, then u, y. Yes, and once again, I would like to say, to stress attention, that if U1 is equivalent to U2, yes? And okay, this is denoted by CU, yes? So people write it like this. C means control, U is U. If U1 is equivalent to U2 as a one qubit operator, it doesn't mean, yes? So that CU1 is equivalent to C, CU2. Yes, so they're not equivalent. Yes, so please, yes, actually, they are, if you speak about quantum computers in the first lecture, you have to say about equivalence relation. But in everything which is uh, after this, it get, give, makes things more confusing. Yes, so please, yes, so, so they're not, they're not equivalent, yes, so please, Yes, pay attention like this. Yes. So, so oh, the statement that if two gates are equivalent, yes, so the difference just by a multiplier by a constant, this doesn't mean that control operators corresponding to them are equivalent. Yes, because once again, if we consider this as a matrix, yes, we will get the following. Yes, 
And if u1 and u2 are equivalent, so this part is different by a constant, but this part is uh, have a multiplier one between them, yes? So they're not equivalent. And uh, I would like especially to stress this attention because you know the later will be gates which are equivalent to identity. At the same time, control this gate is not equivalent to identity, and I will use it a lot in my course, yes? So uh, how it is denoted, how it is denoted, so it's denoted like this, yes? So formally, I never told about equivalence of operators. It, it was not in the course, but uh, smart students yes, can say that, okay, if I have equivalence of uh, states, yes, and this we had, uh, then we also can have equivalence of operators, so which means that, uh, okay, uh, the results in vectors would be equivalent to, so, so kind of, that for any x, u1x is equivalent to u2x. Yes? Uh, psi. Yes? So because it's not necessary. For all psi. For all psi, yes? Yeah? And, uh, okay, now, but technically you know, I don't define it because I don't need it. But quite often people ask questions and so I prefer to ask, to answer the question before it is asked. Yes, actually. And so let us now have a short break. Yes, and, uh, and after this I show how to uh, execute all of this on a computer. Yes, I think it is, uh, it is very important that what, the course is designed in the way how it is designed. Yes, Charles so quite often makes comments why you don't do this, why you don't do that, yes? Because for this thing, I have a device on which I can run it. So this is the reason why I speak exactly how I speak, not in a different way. Because in the end, there is a device. Let us see what we have, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so five minutes pause. So, and, uh...
so let's continue. Yeah. And let me check. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you can go to the website, yes, quantumcomputing.ibm.com. Yes, I send this link to everybody, I think by email and uh, to Telegram and to Telegram three times, yes. <laughs> and if you don't remember this, you can uh, write uh, IBM, quantum IBM Quantum in Google, yes, and they will, the first link will be this one. Yes, yeah, so your website is open and uh, you come, it's free to register there and please register, yes, <laughs> here, yeah. I, I already did this and sorry, I will not show how to, to register, yes, please, <laughs> please how to say, do, do it yourself, yes. But the, let me show in any case uh, what you will see afterwards, yes, so what you can do there. Yes, and might be it will stimulates you to actually to, re <laughs> to register and to, to follow what I am uh, doing. Yes, so you see certain screen, yes, and uh, uh, here uh, basically what you see. So you see quantum composer, so this link, we will work with this a lot. It allows you to write and uh, run programs on real computer and on simulator of it, writing program in the notation like this. Basically, yes, and the corresponding language quantum assembler, QAsm, uh, which is uh, just kind of repeating exactly. So gate by uh, one gate is one line, yes, basically. And uh, uh, so there is IBM Quantum Lab, which allows you to write code for quantum computers, but uh, on Python, basically on Python, yes. Yes, but this we will not touch, you know, that's, uh, you know, it's maybe next semester we will have a full course and we will touch everything, yes. So uh, here, this is two, two things which you can do. And there are several things which you can look on, yes. And you can look on and of course, uh, uh, the, the IBM wants to show which physical devices they really have and to explain why this is the best devices, yes, and some technical information about it. So it is here, but first let us write at least one program yes, on, on quantum computer. So I go, I start with uh, quantum composer and okay, I already did something, yes, but let us ignore this and let us start from the beginning. Let us start with a new file. New file, so new program. Yes, might be I can make it bigger. Let me check. Yes, okay. New file. Yes, so I have a, uh, no, I should make it smaller because in other case uh, it, not everything fits, <laughs> yes, on the screen. Uh, so I started, I make a new, file and you see three strings by some reason it uh, in each, no how to say by default it assumes that you are working on three qubits yes let us first write a program for one qubit yes so for this I just go and remove those two yes and uh, let me put some gate yes so here there are a lot of gates later I haven't explained all of them yet yes but I explained Adamar. Yes, let me put here Adamar gate. Yes, okay, it's wonderfully placed here. And uh, on the right side, you see this code on the language of QAsm, yes, quantum assembler. And basically, okay, it starts that, okay, I'm writing on QAsm. It tells that, okay, I have one, uh, three, one qubit. And okay, the another thing is the results of measurements. And I will have measurements of one qubit, basically, yes. And uh, okay, I put uh, Adamar operator, it's a line. I put Adamar operator, yes. <laughs> mm, I cannot comment more and I don't think that more details are important. Everything will be just s s similarly, okay, this line by line corresponds to one gate, one line, yes. And uh, okay, uh, now we go down. Yes, so let us, the sphere, let us ignore it. How I can uh, maybe remove it. Yes, so let's ignore it. Yes, but here we have a result. So it's online calculating the scheme. 
Yeah, so because uh, with a small number of qubits, of course, it can calculate any scheme, you know, just in, in here, I don't know, local on local computer or, or on the servers, I don't know where they calculate. But still, they can do these operations, which I, the exercise which I did here. Yet, and here there are two things. You can either ask to show probabilities, yes, this tells that if you measure with which probability, you will get zero, yes? And it is one half here, yes? And with which probability you will get one, it is one half. Or you can ask for state vectors. So then it will show coefficients in front of it. And uh, uh, let me try to make it even smaller. Yes, because if I make it even smaller, then you will see that, okay, it has sizes, yes? Okay, you... Uh, you don't see here, uh, but it is, uh, let, oh, I can do like this. Yes, I can do like this. Yes, and it makes, it allows me to make it bigger. Yes, ah, oh, but okay, no. I don't, see, oh, just a second, I need to tune. Ah, yeah, and uh, the colors, shows to you what is the, so this is the amplitude, yes, which is one over square root of two here. Yes, and the color shows the, the phase, yes, the rotation, complex rotation, yes, there. And for instance, if I put here not, yes, which gives me zero minus one, yes, so then they become of the same size but of different color. Yes, and with the time you will learn by yourself. So I, I don't think that it is important that I comment this anyhow. Yes, but let us now see uh, how to run this. Yes, how the, you can really use the device. Yes, presuming that you don't have a five qubit but 50 qubit scheme, so you cannot plot this wonderful graph, yes? So then you do measurement here. Yes, and okay, it chooses some random seed and shows you this result here, but now you can run this, yes? And let us go, see there is a button, set up and run, yes? And there are two possibilities, so, so uh, kind of what you see here, okay, you see here that you can uh, say the name, yes, and let me call it H, H uh, simulator, yes, because I'm going to run this on simulator, not on a real quantum computer yet, yes. So the, what? Yes, I have an access here, yes. To, yes, yes, Let, please be calm for a while, I will show, yes, this. <laughs> yes, and you can here specify the number of times which you run it, so always, any running will be the following. It runs the program, it's do measurement. This measurement is your output, yes? And it runs the program, okay, 1,024 times, yes? And in the end, what would be provided is statistics. So I get this result, this number, uh, this result, that number of times, yes? And so on, so it's easy for one qubit, yes, because there are two possible <laughs> states, but if you now work with more, then it's more tricky, yes? And you can specify this. Yes, not more than actually 8,000, I think, so there is a limit how, how much you can run. Yes, and here, you choose on which device you are running. Yes, and let me, and devices uh, consist of real computers and of simulators. Let me first do this on simulator because on simulator we get result immediately and for computer we will need to, to wait for a while, yes? <laughs> because this will be a line, yes, and so on. So let me see where is the simulator. So, and uh, I suggest who are some simulator. You experiment yourself if you are interested, yes? So you choose this and you run, yes? What you see, you see that on the left-hand side, okay, something happens. You don't see what has happened, but there is a button here, yes, and where there are jobs which you did, yes. And okay, you look on it, and it show, can show you the results, yes. 
And this, this is the result. Let me make it smaller. Yes, it's, yes. So this is how it demonstrates the result. Yes, so it was 520 times it was 0, and uh, 504 times it was 1. Yes, which is OK for 50%, basically, yes. So this is really do. They, they do, they show more information. In particular, they show the uh, scheme which was really run. And for simulator, it is always the same as you prescribed here. And for real computer, they do some manipulations. Because, OK, Adamar operator, for, for instance, is not implemented on a physical device. On a physical device, implemented something different. Yes, and so they decompose Adamar operator into what exactly is implemented here, but they do that by, by themselves, this, yes, not, not asking you. Yes, and okay, let us run on, on a real computer, yes. Yes, and uh, let me see where there is the smaller line. So here is the smaller line, yes, and H real. Yes, I do set up and run. Yes, I do set up and run. And OK, once again, it should appear uh, here, jobs. Yes, so it's in, the pro in progress. Yes, it will take some time. OK, you don't see, but it, it tells that, OK, the program is OK. I'm going to run it. Yes, now it's in the line. Yes, and uh, stuff like this. And OK, see more details. Yes, and uh, because the line was not very big, I expect, OK. Yes, and uh, OK, while we are waiting, and it is writing here that we are waiting. So this is, OK, this is what scheme which we wrote, yes? And this is the scheme which is really executed, and it is not the same, yes? Because here there are some other one, uh, one qubit operators, yes? I guess already next lecture, not this lecture, I show, okay, what is the main U, yes, what is actually can be used, yes, and here there is this RZ, so rotation Z, uh, there is square root of naught, yes, we know that for any operator there is a square root because it's unitary operator, yes. This is what physically implemented, yes, so that's, uh, that's the, the reason, yes. It also has a QASAM, yes, so. So yes, yes, so now I put the image, yes, so it, it's doing the, so on the left column you see original, yes, on the right column you see uh, what it actually executing, yes. And you can both see on the language of uh, QASAM, yes, but which is still line by line, yes. Or you can use Qiskit, yes, term, so which tells you on Python how to write this. And this is, by the way, that's very good to study, yes, because it's better than tutorial, yes. You write a program, they show to you how it looks like. This is the best tutorial, yes, basically. Yes, and after this, of course, because of Python, you can use cycles, you can use functions. Yes, you can do, do your stuff there, yes. And OK, I hope that while it is doing, it's already uh, run. Let me run it, yes. Uh, refresh it, yes. And uh, so it's, uh, it's uh, the result is there, yes, and OK, uh, it's 523. For, yeah. This Python version would be ran on a primary computer with the, uh, just like we, we were talking about last week, with, with uh, like the quantum computer. Yeah. So, yes. So uh, there is a possibility there, let me, so I will not teach it during the course how to do this, but you have a wonderful tutorials by IBM. You, you, you follow this, yes? If you go to the, Starting page, how I can go to starting page. Uh, yes, here. Yes, you have here IP token. Yes, which is kind of your personal token. Yes, and you can use it 
yes, to put it somewhere. And after this, you can run it on a quantum computer by IBM. So you write on your laptop the code in Python. You substitute in a proper place IP token. And when you press button run, and uh, there is a line to run on a computer there in your Python code, it will really go to real quantum computer. Yes, but okay, we trust IBM, yes, that uh, when it uh, changed the scheme, it changes to an equivalent one, to the one which is an ideal world. What? So, so it's equivalent. So, so look, yes. No, look, look. So the, there are gates which are implemented on an IBM computer. Yes, this is a subset of what I teach you. Yes. Moreover, it is a theorem that what uh, is implemented by IBM is a complete uh, uh, kind of you can put it together and get what I teach you. Yes, yeah, so this, this is equivalent schemes. No, this is, this is algorithmically easy. This is of linear time to transform one to another. And this is by multiplier, I forgot, five or something multiplier. Five, yes, say, which increases the length of the scheme. Yes, yeah, so this is kind of, this is not the essence, yes? So like this is introduction to quantum computer. We need to start with something, yes? And age gate is, uh, you know, understandable. Zero goes to zero plus one, and one goes to zero minus one. Perfectly understandable. What is doing square root of naught? Who knows, yes? What is doing this rotation of z with a angle pi over four, yes? <laughs> Who knows, yes? But this physically, this could be implemented, yes? But logically, it's easier to think in terms of Adamar operator or other, or other operators. Controlled node is the operator which is implemented. Usually, this is the only one two-dimensional gate, uh, two-qubit two gate which is implemented on computer. Yes, so the, the other are just constructed from it, yes? Yes, so that's... The, the, but by the way, so it's it's true that controlled not is and it's enough as a two dimension two two gate operator which uh, which is implemented. Yes. So uh, this is how uh, it works. Yes. So uh, let me go there. Yes. And uh, okay, I showed uh, so. Uh, on real computer, the result was relatively good. Also, 523 and 501, this is acceptable for 50%, yes? Uh, it's a surprise, usually it's worse. <laughs> yes, so you, usually it's um, a bit more on zero, yes, and a bit less in one, yes? But okay, might be it was a computer was in a well-tuned, uh, yes, <laughs> at that moment. And uh, okay, uh, now let us do something with several qubits. Yes, now well, let us do something with several qubits. And uh, so once again, new file, let me do something with two qubits. Yes, two qubit. And let me implement my favorite scheme, which is H. I put Adamar operator on the first, and I put C not operator. Yes, and if you carefully do the transform, you will see that it is either 0, 0, oops, let me, it's either 0, 0 or 1, 1. Yes, either 0, 0. So now we have four possible options technically. Yes, but it's either 0, 0 or 1, 1. Yes, so this is two things, and okay, let me try to run it. Yes, and I will not run in simulators anymore because 
you how to say you trust yes that simulators works okay so I will go immediately to run on a real computer so I write setup and run I do could do could be it real yes and nothing has happened so there appears for a while a little note here yes but I especially did this mistake in order uh, to, to make you not confused when you make this mistake. It's, I still always regularly doing it. You have to put some measurement. Without measurement, it cannot be run. Yes, on the computer. Yes, and so let me put measurement here. Here one and here two. Yes, let me measure both of them. And okay, now I will go to set up and run to real and let me choose Okay, this one is still uh, small line in it, so I run it. Yes. And okay, once again, it is here. I open more details, and we will have to wait for, for a while, yes, so. Uh, okay, it's, I, I viewed all jobs. Yes, this one. Oh, okay, it's already run. Yes, the, the result is already there. Good. <laughs> yes, so uh, what's important things to see? Yes, first of all, that it, once again, it replaced H by some other operators. It leaves C not as C not because this one is really implemented on a physical device. Yes, and this is the result. And you see there is a visible probability, yes, so 26 out of uh, 1,000, yes, to 2.5%, that, okay, it, something went wrong, yes, because it was not possible that you get one of them is zero, one of them is one. Yes, and this is, and okay, for one zero it's the same, and this is the reason why, I mean, we still don't have a, a revolution in calculations, yes, because, yeah? Fluctuations. Uh, uh, so, uh, I will give two answers. I will give two answers. First of all, you are correct, and this is gives us a chance that quantum computer will be good enough for machine learning. Yes, but uh, uh, there is a, another side of this story. Look, we did just two operations and gave, get 5% yes, of error. Yes, so when we do 20 operations, it will be 100, no, okay, not literally 100, <laughs> but this would be, just has nothing to do with what the scheme is supposed to do, yes? And this is the, uh, one of the parts where, on what really people working on quantum computers are thinking right now. I mean, what to do. So, okay, even the devices, of course, will become better. Yes, and if you compare this, look on the evolution of the result of this program with years, yes, it become, it's becoming better and better, yes, every year, yes. But still, okay, there is a chance that it would be, okay, 99% good, yes, but there is no chance that it would be 99.9999999% good, yes. So it seems that, you know, people are not ready like physics is not ready for such employment. So there is a huge uh, story. I will not touch it in the course, but you know, if, if you are interested, we can you know do a seminar for ourselves after <laughs> after the way we study this. Yes, and uh, uh, where people are thinking what to do with this. So they know how to operate, say, with four qubits, four bad qubits that together it is operating as a one good qubit. Yes. So, Yeah, so there is another thing, there is another approach. People try to put not kubit, but kutrit. Yes, yeah, so they put a third state which kind of 
Well, why, why I put 0 and 1, yes? Why one state could not be 0, 1, 2, <laughs> yes? But, okay, I have a Q treat, but I work with it as a qubit, yes, logically, yes? So, which means that, okay, bad implemented Q treat, it has more information, more computational power. How to do this, how to use it in order to have a good qubit? Yes, yeah, so, so there are things people are thinking about it. It's not unified. The physical object, which is beyond, is just the, there is implementation of qubits on quantum dots, on ions, on electrons, on photons. I have no, I have no ideas about physics. I know that people are fighting for the temperature on which, on which computer are operating. Yes, and the kind of. No, on which temperature it could operate. So there are computers which could operate on 50 kelvins. I mean, this is a hot for quantum physics, yes? <laughs> No, so yes, if you look physically on the on D wave computer, which is okay, I didn't look what is IBM computers, but I look what uh, what is physically D wave computers. So this is a cube, three meters by three meters by three meters. Yes? But you think quantum can it be huge? Yes, it should be little. And the true calculation chip is really little, and the rest is a cooling system. <laughs> yes, so that's <laughs> Okay, uh, might be a mistake because this is information of say of 2017, 18. <laughs> yes, so might, might be now it's different. And let us, uh, okay, we have five minutes. Let us write one more program. Yes, and uh, this would be it. And I very recommend to everybody to register here. Yes, and I mean to, to play by yourself with this. Then I mean this is much more useful than listen to, to this presentation. Yes, and okay, let me do. Let us put this discussion when the lecture finished. Yes, let me first. I, so I showed Deutsche Yosa algorithm, yes, for understanding this function balanced or or constant, yes, and let me implement it for one bit, yes. So this would be like this. So I need to stay with two, two qubits. The program should be with two qubits. So uh, I need to put the second operator into one state, so I put zero. I need to put Adamar operators on the first and on the second, so it's uh, kind of commuting. Now I need to make this QF. And as a QF, I put C0. Yes, and let us see that C0 works uh, as a, or as this QF, that for zero it is zero, for one it is one. So it is a balanced uh, function. Yes, so for balanced function, we need to get what? Not zero. Yes, as a result, yes. And what we need to do is, so we do one more Adamar operator and we do measurement, yes. So this is what we were doing, yes. And let, now we can run, yes, and see in, in a perfect world, we should get perfect zero, a uh, perfect one. We should get perfect one. Let us see what we will have. Yes, I actually haven't run this at home, yes. So let, I, it would be interesting for me as well, yes. So I write uh, Deutsche Yosa. So I put C naught. So I, I, I choose, so I put C naught as a Q, QF, yet. 
which corresponds to a function f, which is f of 0 is 0, f from 1 is 1. It is a balanced function. Yes? Yeah, I mean, this is, a, you know. Uh, the goal of this algorithm, of, of this run, yeah, let me run it, so we, because it takes some time when it is running, yes? And uh, so, yes, it's, uh, I run it, yes, okay, now it's uh, <laughs> staying in line, yes, so we can discuss, yes? So, no, it, so I wrote, I had a program, yes, and I had on a blackboard the proof that the program is working, yes, but if you were a software developer, yes, and I'm pretty sure that you wrote some code, even after you prove that code works correctly, you need to run it and to check, you know, if it is really correct. <laughs> Here it, like, uh, Deutsche Yosa algorithm show, tells us that this scheme should give us output one with probability 100. That's it. Let us, and, and, and. So now it trans, so this is the function f, yes, which is beyond uh, you know, the, the world, yes? So we have implementation of QF, which is C0, yes? And Deutsche, we, we, our goal was to understand, is F balanced or uh, constant, yes? And okay, we need to know this, and we run Deutsche Yosa, and if we should get one in the output, because it is balanced, yes? And on a perfect computer, on a perfect quantum computer, it should do this. Let us see what it is, will do on a not perfect computer, just to answer your question. <laughs> yes, how, how much uh, it is not, uh, how much it is changing. Because, okay, now we have already s substantial number of operators, yes, inside. Yes, let us see, I, I don't know, actually. Because on some, pro actually on programs with two qubits, it works relatively good. Yes, it starts to work bad on, from three, five, yes. And so let us see, yes, so jobs, view all jobs, uh, okay, not in, so let's, so this is ready. Yes, so we can see the, we can see the result. And the result was that okay with, uh, High probability, it was uh, one, yes, yeah, so the algorithm works good, yes, but still there is a probability of 75, yes, yeah, so 7.5%, 7%, yes, that it makes a mistake. And the scheme was not very long, <laughs> yes, yeah, so you have a 7%, and actually most of the mistakes come from a single operator, C0, so just this. Uh, when you write uh, code, yes, and uh, you can do it with a fancy uh, libraries which helps you with this, uh, they always, uh, one of the metric of your scheme, they shows you number of C0 operators inside. C0 operators in the scheme. Because actually the truth is that one qubit operators are quite well implemented, yes, so they work working good and without mistake. And most of the mistakes are con contained in the implementation of C0. This is. Yes, so this you ask me a lot, yes? Control not. Control not, it's called C0, yes. So well, let us get used, yes, to this. And uh, okay, so let us think that this is the, the end, yes, so, and the, what I illustrated, I illustrated that you can really run on a quantum computer, which I think surprised at least Charles, yes, I don't know how others, what? Surpr I surprised you that you can really run on a real, yeah, 
Yeah, but you see, the, my pre low priority was we were waiting one or two minutes, yes. And uh, uh, the other stuff is uh, that, okay, now we are able to run programs. Yes, we can write them. We don't know well theory yet, yes, so because I still showed you basically only not Adamar and Synod gates. Yes, which is not enough to, uh, to proceed correctly. Yes, so the next lectures we will do consider how to proceed more correctly. And uh, we will see some advanced algorithms. We will see that, for example, plus one, yes, it's already advanced algorithm. <laughs> yes, so which maps k to k plus one, yes. And uh, we will see uh, Fourier transform, how to do this exponentially faster than classical computers. We show how you can put uh, initial values inside quantum computer, how you enter low, uh, that data in a quantum computer. And uh, so also we see some weak things like a Grover algorithm and uh, period finding, which is a part of this famous shore, but I will not do shore complete, yes, because actually complete shore takes lecture and, and the half, basically, yes. And if we have time, this how fast we will go, we will uh, see how one can do inversion of uh, matrices there, yes, so that's, but this would be the last thing if we have So, uh, yes. So let me let me answer. Yes, basically. So uh, so first of all, there is a notion of quantum comple of al complexity of quantum algorithms. I will not touch this because I'm not expert and, and I can do this on the, only in the level mm, longer, short, <laughs> yes, and, and stuff like this, yes. Uh, and uh, the other thing why I'm not interested is exactly your comment, yes, because actually uh, implementation of quantum computers is not good enough yet in order to follow this complexity story. We are mathematicians. Uh, for what this course is aimed, basically. Uh, this uh, course is aimed that, uh, okay, now we don't have a quantum device, so we don't have a, a vacancy of, uh, of people for quantum developers. <laughs> yes, quantum software developers. But at some point, the uh, devices will become good enough and you know we will have these vacancies. Yes, and we are kind of preparing to this story. Yes, so all the course is uh, actually constructed in a such a way that I assume that there is a device which perfectly implements uh, the model. Today I showed to you that devices which exist now are not <laughs> devices like this. But all the, uh, all the, in, in all the lectures I assume that you have such a device, yes? And this is a question of future. So we are mathematicians, we always look on future. As, as soon as it is already implemented, not we are working on this, engineers are working on this. Yes, so this is the, the vision which I have under, under, under. Yeah, no, but, but, but. Yeah, okay, but this is the, the, the I think I answered to your question. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Ah, Ada, yes, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs>
yeah, so that's, uh, that's my vision, my dream is that at some point there will be a blow up of uh, vacancies and uh, quantum software developer. And, uh, you know, at that moment, you are ready for this. <laughs> but uh, who knows when it would be. So in 2016, I actually believe that this, uh, this would be in five years. Yes, it didn't happen. Yes. So now I also believe that it will be in five years. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, in the first time I saw this in 2004, and at that time I told, no, 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 at, at least 20 years. <laughs> yes, but before it would really happen. So at 2004, I didn't study this. <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, so more questions? Yes. Um, so thank you. Yes. So no, uh, so I'm going to speak the next lecture about what is actually exists on IBM of, of which scale. So uh, the, in IBM it exists of size of say 100 qubits. Yes, but there are details. There are some details underlined. <laughs> and uh, uh, what can I say? There, there is this D wave. Yes, which is more than 4,000. Yes, with limited model. Yes, and uh, as far as I know, with D-Wave, they managed to construct a problem which they cannot solve by a classical computer, but still, but can solve by D-Wave. But, you know, I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not expert in the end, yes? Uh, by, by the way, there is a paper in Nature which was claimed as an illustration that, okay, we created a, a mathematical problem which is solved by quantum computer better than by real computer. But I read this paper, <laughs> yes, and uh, in a few words, it's saying that okay, on quantum computer, it is simpler to make a simulator of quantum computer. So basically, the problem which is stated is to create a simulator of quantum computer. I mean, this is not completely fair story. Yes, so I think everything what is written there is correct. Yes, and I mean, I have no doubts, yes, uh, about this, but still it doesn't make me, myself, yes, sure that this is enough. Yes, we need to have more to prove uh, uh, quantum превосходство, quantum. Yeah, but uh, you know, the, the, this is at least five stories <laughs> of this term. And of course, if there are two different companies, they, each of them tries to say that they're the best. <laughs> yes. I mean, you mentioned IBM, which was, I don't know, company around 10 or something. Uh, Rosenberg, yeah. But uh, there are other companies, for example. Uh, yes. I, I don't know. Yes, so actually, uh, uh, I have experience only with IBM implementation, and this is actually not because they're the best, unfortunately. Yes, so I cannot kind of comment are they the best on. Uh, uh, might be now not only them, but two years ago, or like at the moment when I started to do this, IBM was the only company which provides such an access. And uh, for me, this was the main thing that I can really run programs on a computer. I mean, this is like a two different stories. Either you, uh, how to say, do software development with paper and pen, or you have a device. Yes, this is two different stories for me. OK, yeah, so see you on Monday. Yeah. And I need to send, uh, you need to write me your email address. Yes. And, uh, no, you're... you're